Welcome to Giants Training Camp Report, brought to you by Investors Bank. Joined by Sean O'Hara, I am John Schmelk. The Giants completing their final scrimmage of the preseason at MetLife Stadium on Thursday afternoon. And Sean, obviously it's been a unique offseason, very different. This is sort of the equivalent of what that fourth preseason game would have been in a regular preseason. Yeah, certainly unique. I call it the unicorn season. Everything has been different. Practice, even the, the scrimmages now are different. And certainly, like you said, it would have been a night game. So the fact that the scrimmage was here at 1 o'clock, it was hot. The sweat factor was high. The big fellows were breathing hard. And I know that Joe Judge, that was by design. He wanted them to get acclimated to it four out of their first six games or one o'clock games. So you've got to get your body ready for that. But there was certainly a lot, of, a lot of good work, John. A lot of good tempo work, situational work. They worked the coming out drill off the one yard line. And I thought the second and the third offense has really got some quality reps. Yeah, Colt McCoy taking his team all the way from inside his own one all the way down the field for a touchdown to CJ Board. Let's hear from the head coach of the Giants, Joe Judge, on his thoughts on the scrimmage today. It was a good opportunity for us to come out and work to get the players used to some of the tempo and the flow, whether it was working on the full pregame warm-up or some of the in-game situations we worked today. So it was good. You know, we worked the night game last week, getting ready for Pittsburgh. Today we got a chance to come out for a 1 o'clock game, get used to the timing on our bodies. We really built that in as much as we could, the pregame meeting, the pregame warm-up, coming out here as a team, trying to get our bodies ready to run and hit you know, within the period of time we had to warm them up. So that was good today for the players. That's Joe Judge. And, Sean, you mentioned it. This would have been the exact day the Giants wrapped up their preseason against the Patriots. It's really the final chance for those second and third stringers to earn their way onto the final 53-man roster. Who stood out for you today that really made their mark and might give the front office and the coaching staff second thoughts about who they might have on that final team to take on the Pittsburgh Steelers in week one? Yeah, John, today obviously was about the growth of the younger players and seeing them improve from that first scrimmage, as well as some of the veterans to kind of get a, a last little run at it. We saw Evan Ingram make some really nice catches today, some nice bursts after the catch as well. I thought when you looked at Corey Coleman, what he did with Colt McCoy with the second offense, Corey Coleman showed some great bursts, some great separation, and great hands. And then C.J. Board had a really nice touchdown catch uh, with the defender draped all over him. So I thought those were two very big positives defensively. I thought Leonard Williams looked very stout. Dexter Lawrence, as usual, they were both very active. I thought in the backfield, Darnay Holmes continues to show up. Every single time the ball is in the air, he does a great job breaking the ball up, locating the football. He never panics with it in the air. He's been really impressive. Um, I think the defense did a great job handling a lot of the situations. They created some more pressure too. This Patrick Graham defense, John, on third down, they are giving all kinds of looks, different twists up front. So a lot of great work on both sides of the football. No question about it, Sean. As a former player, how is the preparation factor going to be different for this group this year heading into that first regular season game with no preseason games, with no live action other than what they've done at practice the last couple of weeks, so they are ready for week number one. I think defensively the toughest thing is just the tackling. You know, that, that's the, the, the toughest thing in week one. Even when you have preseason games, the first couple of weeks of the season, it's tough. It's tough, you know, the angles, the finishing, running through those tackles, and then plus now with the limited target zone, that's really hard on these defenders to hit a moving target that is crouching down sometimes. So that's going to take some adjustment. Offensively, the good news for the Giants is their defense is a 3-4 scheme, and they're going to face that 3-4 against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Certainly different rushers with T.J. Watt and Bud Dupree on the outside, but the fact that it's that same personnel I think just helps them out in terms of the protections, identifying the Mike linebackers, and who you have in blitz pickups. Giants general manager Dave Gettleman did talk to the media the other day, and he, he talked about the challenges for a team like the Giants, a younger team with a new head coach, new offensive coordinator, new defensive coordinator, and whether or not they're going to be ready to play in week one against Pittsburgh. I, I just feel like, you know, the roster is, is going to be, you know, competitive. And, and you can um, – it, and, it, and it's got going to have the ability to win games. I'm not putting a number on it. It's about, listen, you, you, you get out there, you get, you know, you put a team out there and, you know, there'll be the fighting Joe judges. I have no doubt. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's going to be a, it's going to go well. And Sean, you talked about the physical challenges of not having preseason games. How about the mental challenges that are going to face this team trying to be ready to go where they're installing on the field for the first time in camp when in a regular off season, that's going to be the third time you're installing the offense. Yeah, you certainly have to play catch up mentally. And I think the one thing that has been evident throughout training camp, not just with the scrimmages, John, is how efficient they've been. The fact that Joe Judge has 
one offense on one field running plays and a second offense on the other field at the same time, that's been unbelievably valuable for not just the players, but for the evaluation of those players. So they've gotten a number of reps. There was not a lot of standing around watching other people do stuff. So they've got more reps than you would have anticipated. The mental aspect of it though, when the season starts and all of a sudden now you've got to morph and you've got to shift into different schemes on third down that, are, that you're used to seeing from your own defense, that's where you kind of see, all right, the young players, the wheels start spinning. And you always say you could tell with the young players when the smoke starts, you can't be thinking at the line of scrimmage. It's got to be a reaction. That only comes with the reps. And of course, it's even more important for a group like the offensive line who requires a lot of synergy to work together to play to their best. Well, Dave Gettle has been trying to build this offensive line for a few years. Here's his thoughts on where the group is right now. We've got the right guys. They just got to learn to play together. And they've got to grow up. I mean, we've got, we got puppies. Talent-wise, I'm really pleased with the group. And Sean, Dave Gettleman said it, a lot of young guys in this group that are going to get a lot of playing time, especially with Nate Solder opting out of the year. What have you seen from this group that makes you optimistic about the season? Well, I, I tell you, the growth that I've seen from the young guys, Andrew Thomas obviously going over to left tackle with Nate Solder opting out. Nick Gates has really come on like gangbusters at center, uh, which is not easy to move inside. He didn't really do that in college, so the center exchange has been good for him, but he's a tough kid. I know Dave Gettleman really likes him. Um, Matt Parrott has really looked good. He's looked really stout. So these young guys, I feel like the growth, they, they've really they've improved mentally and physically. You don't see Andrew Thomas making the same mistake twice either. So he's a quick learner. I think the other guy that they really like is Shane Lemieux. And when I talked to Dave Gettleman the other day, he got so excited about this guy. He's, he's a hog molly. A, he's a hog molly. He's a throwback. <laughs> you know, this kid didn't come off the field in Oregon. In four years, he didn't miss a snap. Started 52 straight games. So he's no doubt a tough kid, a tough warrior. But I think they're also really excited about Will Hernandez. Coming into his third year, he, he's the same weight. He's 330 pounds. But, man, he just looks even more solid, if that's even possible. So they're expecting big things out of Will Hernandez. We also saw Chad Slade get some opportunities with the first offense. And I think he's a young player they like. They want to see him get some of those reps. And, look, you don't just – get a gift of first team reps. He had to earn it. So he's been doing a good job in practice to earn those reps with the number one offense. We mentioned this weekend, you cut down the 53 and a unique challenge this year without preseason games to scout other teams and to evaluate your own team. Here's Dave Gettleman, how things are different in 2020. These guys have gotten a ton of reps. And, uh, you know, as we, as we finish up, uh, there's plenty of, of, of film available to legitimately evaluate all these guys. And I think that when we sit down on Friday, we're going to, you know, after the scrimmage, we're going to be able to really look at each other. And, and the one thing we talked about consistently is at the 53, I said, we have to make informed decisions. We can't, you can't do guesswork on this side. You know that. So, you know, that was a, that was a big emphasis. We want to make informed decisions that I, I truly believe we'll be able to. Do you think teams are going to be more interested in holding on to their own guys this year because they want guys to know their system given the unique circumstances of the offseason? I think that's definitely going to be a factor in this. You know, you know, a new player to come into and have to learn a new system, that's a challenge. And then also picking up a guy off the street, in order to pick them up, they have to pass through the COVID testing before they can even get on the field. So that makes those practice squad guys even more valuable because they've already gone through the testing. You can get them on the field immediately. I think the, the challenge, how do you evaluate another guy from another team in the preseason when, like you said, it could be a rep from last year's preseason games. It could be a rep from the season last year, if it was a first or second year player, or it is college tape. So it's certainly hard to evaluate. Is that guy actually better than the guy that we have? And not just the guy that we have had in weeks two, but has he progressed from week two to three to four? And if he has continued to progress, now maybe that progression occurs during the regular season. So definitely tough for them to evaluate all those reps. Finally, Sean, we also heard from Giants Kohner, President and CEO John Mara. He spoke about how he would judge this season as a success. Yeah, I, I just I want to feel like when we walk off the field after the last game that we play, whenever that is, that we're moving in the right direction, that that we have the pieces in place to compete for a Super Bowl, um, and that the the combination of, of people that we have here is going to work going forward. That, that's what Steve and I need to feel like. And I think we give the same answer every year um, because that's truly what it is. You can't pin it to a certain uh, win-loss total, but you just want to feel like this group that we have together right now um, is building something that's going to compete for a championship. When you look ahead to this season, very young team, unique offseason, what are you looking for when you watch the Giants in 2020? 
Well, growth is, is something that I feel like I've been talking about in training camp. You hear Joe Judge talking about versatility and these young players. Look, the Giants have one of the youngest rosters in the league. And when you look at that aspect of it, you want to see the improvement. And I think too many times in the last couple of years, November and December has been very disappointing around here. So that's what I think John Mayer is looking for. I think Giants fans are looking for that as well. This team is going to be more competent. I think they're going to be more competitive. They're already more physical. You could tell by the way the practices have been run. And I'm excited to see that growth. I think when you look at the wins and losses, it's always tough to gauge that. But no doubt this team is not going to lose games. They're going to find ways to get into the fourth quarter, and then that's when the opportunity has to arise. John Mayer also saying, of course, he wouldn't mind if the team was in the playoff on in late November and December either, but he wouldn't put a firm number of wins on it. Uh, just wants to see progress and for a young team to continuously With improve and get better. With an extra playoff team this year added, yeah. that is absolutely a possibility. No question about it. Sean, it's been a pleasure all preseason. We're finally getting at some real football games. It's been a long time. I can't wait. Thanks, John. Appreciate you joining us today on Giants Training Camp Report, brought to you by Investors Bank. For Sean O'Hara, I'm John Schmelk. We'll see you next time, everybody. Thanks for being with us all preseason long. Regular season football is here.